Hey guys, welcome to the second episode of the Alert Timelapse Expert Tips. And first of all, thank you so much for your positive feedback, for all your thumbs up on my YouTube channel. And today I'm going to pick up one of the questions regarding the gradient animation that I showed last time. Maybe you remember that we introduced a gradient to light up the top right corner of the images, but only in the last part of the sequence. And what I did last time was to bring the gradient here, then just light up a little bit and then synchronize the gradients only to all keyframes and remove the settings on the gradient from the first keyframes. And some of you asked themselves, why does he do that so complicated? Why doesn't he just start bringing in the gradient from here? So let's do that. Okay, I've now reset everything. Let's bring in the gradient at the fourth keyframe. And let me make clear what's happening just by exaggerating the edits here a little bit. Now bring the gradient to the next keyframe, do some edits, and then bring it to the next keyframe, some other edits, and so on. Let's see what happens. Selecting all keyframes, saving metadata, and going to alert time lapse, reload, auto transition, and regenerate the visual previews. And now you can see that the gradient starts coming in from neutral position and rotating in to the position at the fourth keyframe, this is mostly not what we would like to have because in this case we have some undefined movement here from a random starting position. How can we prevent that? It's very easy. Let's go back to Lightroom. In fact, it's enough to just bring the gradient position from this keyframe to this keyframe. I do that by just selecting this keyframe, then doing sync keyframes gradient only. And we can just remove the settings of the gradient, but we leave the position where it is. And normally it's sufficient to do that for the keyframe just before we want the gradient to start doing its job. In the last episode, I just made my life easier by just synchronizing it all the way to the beginning. And then I had the gradient at the same position on all keyframes, no animation needed, and then just brought in the settings when I needed them. So let's see how that looks. So now we have what we wanted. We have the gradient here doing its animation and from the keyframe before, it just fades in, but doesn't change its position. Another situation where you frequently would have to deal with this uh, topic is when editing Milky Way time lapses. For example, here we start in bright daylight and then eventually the Milky Way comes up and often at this position, you would decide to introduce a circular gradient just to emphasize a little bit the contrasts on the Milky Way. So if you do that, you need to take care to bring that gradient to the keyframe before, synchronize it and remove all the edits from it so that it starts coming in here. If you don't do that, you'd also get crazy effect. I will try to show you now. So let's bring in the gradient here at this third keyframe. I'll pick one of the circular gradients here and move it over the Milky Way. Again, I've done some crazy edits here so that you can clearly see what happens. So now you would bring the edits to the next keyframe as usually. I'll just take only the gradients for now and then change the position and rotation of the gradient to follow the Milky Way. Then do that for the next keyframe. And again, follow the Milky Way. Let's save our keyframes. Back in LR time lapse, do reload and auto transition and wait until the visual previews have been completed. Now, if we play back the sequence from the third keyframe, everything looks perfect. 
the gradient just moves with the Milky Way as it should. But if we go before the third keyframe, now you can see what happens again here is that that gradient it comes in from the neutral position, fades in to that position where I set it. This is definitely again not an effect that we would like to have. And this is exactly the same behavior we noticed with the sequence before. Regardless if linear gradient or circular gradient, this always happens if you don't take care to bring your adjustments to one keyframe before and make them neutral there. So let's do it for a last time on this sequence too. I just select my third keyframe again, control or command on Mac and click on the second, then sync gradients only. Now we have the gradient here. Back in develop, I activate the gradient and neutralize the settings. Now back to grid view, I save the metadata for this keyframe, go back to LR time lapse, reload, auto transition, and let the visual previews regenerate. The result now is exactly what we wanted. We have the gradient slowly fading in between keyframe two and three, and then just starting its movement along the other keyframes until the end of the sequence. And now we have the gradient animation exactly as it should be, and we have no random movement anymore. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked this episode and you learned something again. And if so, then give me a thumbs up on the YouTube video and subscribe to my channel. Then we see each other next time for the next LR Time Lapse expert tip. Bye bye.